Hey everyone, this is Vishal from Equity Guru, and today we're going to talk about oil, uh, the energy space. You know, I haven't spoken about the oil markets for quite some time. Uh, obviously, if you follow the energy space, you know, uranium is doing uh, quite a lot of things itself uh, in terms of the spot price, but oil has just been black. You know, we've had a lot of range here back in early uh, 2023, hit these lows here in March. Uh, there was this Surprise news, you know, of an OPEC production cut, which saw uh, oil uh, rally and actually gap up uh, in April. But, uh, you know, there was just no steam there because a lot of the market saw this as um, a weakness, right? They're, that they're cutting production because they know that the economies are going to slow down, etc. cetera. Um, and then from there, you know, we gave up that gap. We actually plugged that gap, which was another major, major sign of weakness. We retested these lows, and I am looking at West Texas here, by the way, uh, the CFD of West Texas crude. Um, and then, you know, since then, again, we've just been ranging here once again since uh, May or early May um, up to, you know, this is where we are in July now. And um, uh, this week actually has been quite a, a nice week for oil. Uh, oil prices are up 2% to a six-week high, and you can see here that it is on supply concerns. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we had another OPEC meeting in Vienna, and uh, there was other production cuts. Saudi Arabia and Russia announced fresh output cuts this week, bringing total reduction by OPEC and its allies to around 5 million barrels per day, or about 5% of the global oil demand. And, uh, you know, here uh, an analyst from Morningstar said OPEC plus production cuts are expected to tighten the market driving supply deficits in the second half of 2023, uh, supporting higher oil prices. So, um, you know, what went from this whole idea of there's going to be not much demand for oil because of, you know, the, the central banks raising interest rates in a way where they slow the economy down, which, you know, obviously thus reduces the demand for oil. That has been sort of the whole narrative here uh, with this drive down. Um, in oil and oil has just been ranging because of you know all the data that's been coming out stating or and a hawkish spread as well right so a lot more people are now saying okay maybe interest rate hikes aren't done uh the day we're recording this is, it is a friday it is july 7th uh, which means we had our nfp data the employment data uh which actually came in uh lower than expected and now people are looking at that as like okay you know if the job data isn't as strong as we thought it was uh, you know, the Fed has always been pointing at the labor market, saying it's strong and robust, hence why we have a strong economy, and hence why the soft landing is still in play. But now, maybe the labor market or the jobs market is losing some steam uh, because we've been seeing a lot of strong growth. Uh, and now, as I said, um, this job data was still uh, around, I think, 200,000 jobs uh, uh, created. It was still quite a high number, but it just didn't beat um, expectations. Uh, I think this just breaks it down. And healthcare and social assistance for the month of June uh, got the most jobs there um, as well. So uh, now, you know, as I said, a lot of people are looking at this saying, okay, maybe now we can sort of change the uh, picture or change where interest rates are, are going to go. You know, maybe it's not going to be as high as we thought anymore, because now the labor market is showing some signs of weakness, uh, indicating that the Fed has uh, raised interest rates to that level where they can start bringing that money velocity uh, down, I guess, right? So keep an eye out on this, because uh, obviously it's not just the oil markets that are reacting on this. You're seeing some reaction in the stock markets um, as well. But let's stick with oil. Um, as I said, best week for oil. A lot of talk now is not for the interest rates and the slowing down of the economy, but this idea now that supply deficits uh, could support higher oil prices. And then we get other news from the Saudis saying that they are actually uh, you know, raising um, or uh, raising their oil prices, uh, the oil that they sell to Asia, um, after their supply cuts. So they're going to be raising their official selling price for Arab light oil to Asia by 20 cents a barrel from July to $3.20 a barrel over Oman and Dubai quotes. So um, this price, I, I guess, was anticipated by most of the market. A lot of refiners thought that the Saudis were going to do a production cut, thus they were, they were going to um, raise their prices as well. 
So now, you know, a lot more people are saying that this um, might cause other nations in Asia and refiners to maybe seek some alternatives from other Middle Eastern suppliers in the region um, because of the, the, the gap between the price of uh, Brent and, and Dubai pegged oil has like narrowed, right? So this is more, you know, if you're a major oil trader, but a lot of people are seeing this as a major news because obviously the Saudis are a big player in the oil markets. And then you have, uh, we've talked about this in the past, the seasonality play, right? The idea of it's summer, the weather is getting nice, seasonality, summer is generally when oil prices go higher because more people are out, more people are doing road trips, more people are driving, and that provides a yearly boost to fuel demand and it pumps prices higher. And this is an analyst from Deloitte here um, as well. Uh, saying oil prices will increase modestly in the next three months as supply cuts kick in and summer driving season revs up. So key key takeaway, key word, supply cuts, you know, OPEC production cuts, plus the uh, summer seasonality versus the idea that the economy is going to be weaker because of a hawkish central bank, right? So those are the two things being played around here uh, in the oil markets. Um, and when it comes to the technicals, you can see this both on the West Texas and also uh, crude here as well, uh, Brent crude, sorry. Um, we have to get that breakout. Uh, obviously very, very strong price action on the day that I'm recording this, but there's still resistance up here around the 74 to 7450 zone. Uh, you wanna see a daily candle close break above that, to trigger a breakout, which might take us back to the $80 level um, and that resistance, of course, after the production cut around 83 is still a major resistance zone that we have to take out. But watch for a breakout here of this range because that would be highly, highly significant. Um, and then, you know, as I just showed you guys here on Brent crude, uh, very similar play here. We have to watch for a breakout above the 7850 uh, level here on Brent crude. We get that break and we can see oil prices uh, or Brent crude, sorry, back to the 85 to 86 zone here. That's the next sort of resistance area I have here. But you know, this chart here, the Brent crude one to me looks a bit more appealing just because of all these touches that you've had here on the 72 zone here on UK Brent crude oil. Uh, you know, you can clearly see a very strong support zone, a very strong resistance zone. We clearly have a range here as well. Um, and we just want to see a breakout that will cause a trigger for a, a, a long position. Because as we all know, if oil stays within this range um, and we don't get that breakout, we can just continue that rate, right? We can maybe see another red candle day and all we do is just continue that range going down and up, down and up, waiting for that breakout. So that's how I typically like to play ranges. I like to wait for that breakout or breakdown, you know, if you want to short. Uh, but others, you know, other traders, I guess short-term traders will go on the intraday charts and just try to look for signals for a continuation um, of this range. So we are now testing the higher limits of that resistance zone on oil prices. Uh, the oil markets haven't been too exciting uh, in the last few months, but if we do get this breakout, uh, you will see a lot of headlines, you'll see a lot of traders, you will see a lot of momentum traders uh, following that breakout. And I think uh, it's something to put on your radar uh, especially if you're a Canadian trader as well, because we all know that the Canadian stock markets are heavily influenced uh, by the price of oil and energy. Uh, so we might be in the beginnings of a major rally here in oil uh, because of supply cuts and this idea of seasonality, supported by this idea that maybe with a weaker employment data, uh, the Fed and other central banks may not be too hawkish uh, going down the road. But of course, we do have the big Fed meeting in July upcoming, and that would also maybe be a catalyst here for the prices of oil. And, you know, if we do get that breakout and if the Fed comes in hawkish, uh, then potentially that could be a false breakout. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. For now, let's wait for this range to break, uh, and then we'll see uh, what the candlestick charts tell us uh, going forward and if momentum traders uh, step in. So that's it for me, folks. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments below if you guys are going long oil right now or do you think oil prices still have further down to go on, say, a weakening economy and maybe that R word, right, uh, a recession. I really want to hear your thoughts below. 
and I'll catch you guys all in the next Heart Attack video.